Hallelujah. You ready for a word tonight? I mean, how many people know that we live in a dark world? Hey, Amen. When we look at the world and all the things that are going on, how many people know that it's time for prayer? Hey, Amen. It's time that we come out of the closet and be the church that God is truly calling us to be. Amen. So for a topic tonight, and I won't be before you long, I just want to share what God has put on my heart. For a topic tonight, I'm going to, I'm going to use the divine call to be a light in a dark world. Amen. The divine call to be a light in a dark world. Our position as the church is to be light bearers in the world. How many people believe that? If the church doesn't do it, how is it going to be done? We have a the authority, we've been given a mandate by the word of God to go forth and be a light, amen? Now, you might have a 10-watt bulb, but that's okay. Because God has given us the ability to go forth and do great things in his name. How many people believe that? It's time for Christians to come out of the closet. The enemy's purpose is to take your light away. The enemy's purpose is to take your light away. We have an adversary called Satan. That's the devil. And that's who fights against everything that's good, everything that's righteous, everything that breaks yokes and destroys strongholds. That's the enemy. We're going to look at John 10.10. 10. Amen. Familiar passages, New King James Version. It says, the thief does not come except but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that you may have life and that they may have it more abundant. Jesus Christ's plan for our life is to have an abundant life. How many people believe that? So if you're needing anything, if you're lacking anything, if you suffer with anything, if that's sickness in your body, then that's not Christ's plan for you. Amen? He wants us, the Bible says it's his will that we prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. So he's come that we might have an abundant life. How many people want an abundant life today? Amen. We have a responsibility as the church of God to go forth and let our light shine. Amen. Let it shine. The world is in the position it is in right now because we're not letting our light shine. The world is in the, in the position that it is in right now because people don't know who the church is. Y'all go pray with me in a minute. We don't. Sometimes I wonder, like, where are the people of God at? When you be on your job sometime, when you see all kind of stuff going on, you wonder, where is the church? Where are the Christians? The Bible said that Jesus went forth, walking up and down the roads of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues. Wherever he went, he went into the synagogues and found the believers. How many people know that? But now we live in a world that you don't know who the believers are sometimes. Sometimes I question, like, where are the believers? Where are the prayer warriors? Where are the intercessors? Where are the watchmen? So we have a call as the church to go forth and be a light. Amen? God cho chooses to reveal himself in the light. We look at Genesis 1 and 3. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. That was the first day of the creation. Genesis 1, 14 through 16 says, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs. And see, light is for signs and seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens and to give light on the earth. And it was so everything God spoke, it just came into existence. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule by day and the lesser light to rule by night. That's the sun and the moon. He made the stars also. That's the fourth day. There was light before the sun and the moon was created. The sun and the moon are just mere reflections of the glory of God. Amen. When we wake up, when I wake up in the morning and I look up in the skies, I say, the heavens declare the glory of God. That's what the words say. Thank you, Lord, for a fresh anointing. Thank you for shining on me today. How many people give God praise when you wake up in the morning? God doesn't have to do anything for us. Amen? When he give us a brand new day, that's a brand new anointing. That's a fresh anointing. That's a brand new opportunity to, to shed light on somebody else. Hallelujah. 
We're going to look at Matthews 5, 13 through 16. Believers are salt and light. Believers are salt and light. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how then can it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the feet of men. So salt has influence. How many people know salt preserves things? I grew up in the country. I'm a country boy. And my dad used to raise uh, horse, I mean, uh, pigs. He got horses and cows, but he used to raise pigs and he would salt the meat. And that meat would last like for, seemed like for years. All winter, all summer, and every time we needed some, you know, he'd cut it and then you have to boil all the salt out of it. But salt is a preserver. Hey, Amen? Salt is a preserver. And so when salt is put on meat, it's a, it performs like a chemical displacement. In other words, it takes all the moisture out of it. We are the preservers of the word of God. That's all I'm trying to say. We are the preservers of God's word, and we are the preservers of the world. Amen? And that's why we have to go. And it says here, too, is that, you know, if, what would you do if you were, you know, salt ain't good for you anyway, but what would you do if you were just trying to put salt on your food and it never got salty? What would you do with it? Probably just throw it away, right? How many people just throw it away? I mean, they ain't doing you no good. I mean, it's not salting your food. So what good are we if God has entrusted us? He's given his son, Jesus Christ, for us to be lights in the world. But what would, I mean, what good are we if we don't let our light shine? What good are we if we're not being that salt? Amen. It says right here that it's good for nothing but to be thrown out, to be trampled on the feet of men. God has seasoned us to be influencers and preservers on the earth and of the gospel. Verse 14, John 1 and 14 says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they, do they put a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lamp stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father which art in heaven. The proper place and proper position for light is to be put on a lamp stand. The, our proper place as Christians is to be a light that stands out in the dark world, amen? It's not, we're not supposed to be in the closet. We're not supposed to be under a bushel. We're supposed to be out being, being light so that we can guide people out of darkness into the light. Amen? Hallelujah. So what is, what is light? Light comes from a Greek word, phos, P-H-O-S, meaning light, source of light, fire, firelight, divine illumination to reveal and impart life through Christ. So when we're going out witnessing to people, when we're going out uh, being a light, we're imparting the word of God into that person's life, amen? You ever been on your job and you see that, you know, you got some people like they volunteer for everything? They're always helping somebody, you know, they just be waiting on something, something to happen, you know? They're always stepping in, always volunteering, always giving a helping hand. How many people know folks like that? Hey, amen. They're being a light. And if we had more people being a light, then we wouldn't have so much darkness in the world, amen? So we need to let our light shine bright, amen? We need to let our light shine bright because we live in a dark world. Look at all the things that are going on in the world. How many people agree that it's time for us to shine brighter? In other words, to increase our footprint in the earth. I mean, God's given us power. He's given us authority, but we got to use it. Jesus Christ's work is a finished work. Amen? He's given us the authority and all the, the earth to go forth and do great works. We're going to look at John 8 and, 8 and 12, New King James Version. He said, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Look at somebody and say, you don't have life without the light. 
you don't have life without the light of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the light. And that's why we walk in the light so that we can fulfill his purposes. Why do you think the world is in darkness? It simply says here the reason that the world is in darkness is because they are not following Jesus Christ. And the reason they don't know Jesus Christ is because we're not being a light sharing it with them. People don't know Jesus unless we share it, right? So if we're not letting our light shine, people are not going to know the way of the world, the way of the Lord. God's intent is for us to live our best life, both physical and spiritual. How many people want to live your best life? Hallelujah. The Bible says he came that we may have an abundant life. And he promised to supply all of our needs according to what? His riches and glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. We are created in the image of God, which gives us the capacity to know his eternal life. We're in God's image, which means that we're like him. Amen. We've been given everything that we need to be successful in the world. Amen. Genesis 1, 27 through 28. This is our divine potential. Whenever you see divine, that means that it, it comes from God. Amen. Amen. Of or originating from God. It's from God himself. It's the manifestation of a thing that comes from God. So it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created him, them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. This happened in Genesis. This is, if you ever want to know what God's purpose is, just go back to the beginning, amen? This is our divine potential. This is the authority that we have in the earth as the children of God, amen? The Bible says that all authority in heaven and earth is given in his name, Amen? The reason that we can do the work of ministry, the reason that we can go and make disciples is because the authority has been given. We've, we've been given everything that we need to go forth and do the work. We just need to do it. Amen? Hallelujah. We ought to produce the image of God in the earth. You know, in Genesis, it talked about everything produced after its own kind. So we are supposed to reproduce the image of God in the earth. And how do you think we do that? By being a light. By sharing the gospel. And that's the good news. Amen? We have the blessing on us. That's the divine potential. That's the blessing. God bless them. And that's why that we can go forth and do the work. Amen? Because we have the blessing on us. No man can curse us. We can be put under a curse because of what we do, but we can't be cursed. You remember when King Balak wanted Balaam? The curse Israel, and the, he spoke to a donkey, and then Balaam said, you can't curse what God is blessed. Even when Adam sinned in the garden, Adam and Eve sinned in the, in the garden, God cursed the ground. He didn't curse them because he had already blessed them in Genesis 1.26. So we're blessed. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you're not blessed. You got the blessing of Abraham upon you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm blessed. Psalms 119 and 105 says, you are, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. God's word guides us, leads us in the right path. Amen? Whenever you find somebody that's not a student of the world, they're not going around in the right path. Amen? They're living their lives in a way that's going to lead them into a place of unrighteousness, uncertainty. Amen? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. God's word is like a spiritual compass and GPS that leads us in the right direction where there's safety and blessings. It constantly makes corrections and redirects us when we get off, off course. How many people have been using your GPS system? You make a wrong turn or something like that, and it'll say it's redirecting you and this and that and trying to get you back. That's the way the word of God is. The Word of God is a blueprint of how we should live. Amen? It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathways. In the same way, like lighthouses help ships navigate to safe shores, 
our light helps lead people to Christ. I didn't even know this. Did you, did you know that when a ship's navigation system goes out, that they can look at the lighthouses and navigate? And they can, they can get back home just by looking at the lights by the seashore. Our lights that we have, that we use when we go and share the gospel, can lead people out of darkness into the light. The light that we have can lead people to safe shores in Christ. Amen? But we got to let them shine. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. I'm going to read this in the Amplified uh, Bible. It says, all scripture is God-breathed, given by inspiration, by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience. For training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage, so that the man of God may be completely, complete and proficient. I like that. That the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. I'm going to read that again. That the man of God may be complete and proficient and outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Look at your neighbor and say, God has a work for you to do. Everything God created, he created it with a purpose and a plan. Amen? Hallelujah. Everyone has a work to do. What have you been called to do? How many people know what your gifts are? You can raise your hand. Hallelujah. How many people know what your gifts are? We all have a gift, a call, and a purpose, and a plan. Ephesians 2 and 10 says that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We're, we've been fashioned. We've been created. We've been made to be like him. Amen. To do good works. And when we do those good works, guess what? We're light, letting the light shine. We're being a light bearer to the world. 1 Corinthians 12 and 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one to profit, to profit of all. For the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Which means that everybody has something. Everybody has been given a gift. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a plan that God has for them to go forth and be a light. Amen? I mean, you just don't turn the light on when you come to church and you turn it off when you get in the car and you go to your jobs and you go in the marketplace and you go wherever you go. That's why the world is so confused. That's why the world is so confused is because they don't know who the light is. They don't know who the true light bearers are because so many people, you know, that we see in the church, their lives are not uh, lining up with what they profess them to be. Amen. The Bible says you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. People are looking for the fruit. People are looking for the fruit. They're looking for something that lines up and represents who they say they are. Amen. And it's tough sometimes. Because there's an expectation when you say and stand up for righteousness that you're going to live a certain way, amen? Hallelujah. The word manifestation that comes from a Greek word that means the coming of light. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given. In other words, there's things that come to light when we go forth and use our gift. God makes things come to light to us, what our gifts are, so that we can go forth and use those gifts to glorify his kingdom. Hallelujah. Which means that we all have the ability to become visible light, light bearers of the world, of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4 and 11 through 12. Familiar scripture, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. New King James Version says, And he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for a work of ministry, 
for the edifying of the body of Christ. That word ministry, that word ministry means service. Amen. Everybody that Christ called, he called them to be a servant. A man of servant. So that word means servant. And these, you know, I always say when I read this, he gave the sum. You ever think about that you could be part of the sum? You know, so many times we put push the sum out on everybody else. Yeah, that's that's bishop and that's apostle such and such and this is, but you could be part of the sum. That could be your calling, that could be your gift. Amen. How many people believe that? I mean, we're being perfected to go forth and do a work, but the work that you do could be part of the fivefold ministry. You ever thought about that? So he gave some. And the only reason God gives any gift is to equip us to do a work of service. And God requires us to do the work that he's called us to do. And it's, it's for the edifying of the body of Christ. And that word edify means to build up. So the ministry work that we do builds up the body of Christ, amen? It builds the body of Christ. Of anything that you see, if, if something is tearing something down, then that's not of God, amen? That's not of God because we build things up for the kingdom. We build things up for our daddy so that we can go forth and make him happy and do the, the true work of ministry. A Philippians 2, 13 through 16, uh, King James, New King James Version, Philippians 2, 13 through 16. For it is God's, God who works in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure. That means that's God aligning his purpose with his will for our life. Verse 14 says, do all things without complaining and disputing. That can be hard to do sometimes. It says, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the dark in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that you may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Now, you may ask yourself, how many people know that everything and everything has to do with light? Even your body has light energy in it. Your cells, your nervous system, all that is powered by light and energy. How many people know that? You got energy in your body. Light is a type of energy. Light exists in tiny energy packets called photons. And I'm not going to go to science class, but I'm simply saying light is energy. The Holy Spirit is energy. The Holy Spirit is power. Amen? Hallelujah. If I was to cut all the lights off in this church, you think that y'all could come to this light? Can somebody turn the lights down just a little bit? Could you come to this light? Okay, you can turn them back up. Everybody see that light? And what I'm saying is, it doesn't take a whole lot of light to lead somebody to Christ. It doesn't take a whole lot of light to somebody going down the wrong path to start kind of redirecting and going toward the way that they should go. It doesn't take this time. Just be that little 10-watt bull. That's fine. If that's all you got and God's going to add more as you're faithful to do the work of ministry, God's going to give you some more. Bob says it's, it's, it's his good pleasure to give us a kingdom. He wants to give us gifts. He wants to give us things that can build a kingdom. So it doesn't do you any good to have anything if you're not going to build a kingdom. If you're not going to be a light bearer to a lost world. In military training, when we do tactical maneuvers at night, you can't see anything. But we go for miles and miles and miles. And you know what we look at? It's a little thing that we wear on our helmet called cat eyes. These two little luminous squares on this. This is what I would wear on my helmet. And we would be led for miles just looking at two dots on the back of somebody's helmet. 
once again, it doesn't take a whole lot of light to lead somebody in darkness. You can't be shining flashlights when you're in enemy territory. <laughs> Amen? Somebody talk to me. But just these two little lights. I've marched for miles looking at these two little luminous lights. I didn't know who was in front of me sometime. All I could see was the light. And that's all this dark world needs is your light. They don't have to know who you are. If you're in the marketplace, if you're on your job, if wherever you are, just be a light. Because you're leading them, you're guiding them even when you don't know. So just be a light that shines in darkness so that men will see your good, good works and glorify God. Everything we do is to give God glory. It's not about us, amen? Look at your neighbor and say, it's not about me. Light doesn't care about darkness. I've been talking about we live in a dark world, but light doesn't care about darkness. If we harness enough light, we can expel darkness. And so many times, you know, we know how to get the light out of the darkness out of this room. We just turn the lights up. But when it comes to the demonic forces and spirits in the world, we act like we ain't got sense of know what we need to do. Turn the light up. Turn your light up. Let your light shine so that men will see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Your proper place as the church is to be on a light, on a lampstand. It's not to be hidden. It's to be on a lampstand to be lifted up so that men will see. The only, the only way that people know Christ is if we tell them. You know, when we leave church, we didn't got the message. Let me turn my light off too. And we get the message, we should be going out finding somebody to share that message with. Amen? The early church was so, the Acts 242 church and the Acts 6 church, the Bible said that they continue steadfast in apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking the bread and prayer. And the Bible said miraculous wonders, signs and wonders were done at the hands of the apostles. People had to believe because there was a manifestation of power and authority. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the Holy Spirit is our power source. Hallelujah. Acts 1 and 8, New King James Version, very familiar scripture. But you'll have power. And this was when, you know, the disciples was asking Jesus, you know, at this time will you restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said, you know, it's not given to me to know the times and seasons. You don't need. In other words, he's saying you don't need to know all that. This is what you need. But you'll have power when the Holy Spirit came, comes upon you. And you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and the ends of the earth. It's a progressive thing. When we start letting the power of God work inside of us, that's something that happens in increasing measure. And we're more of an influence. We have more of a footprint in the earth. But we got power. We just got to use it. Hallelujah. We just got to use it. Luke 24, 4 to 8 through 50, New King James Version. And you are my witnesses <clears throat> of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tear in the city of Jerusalem until you are endowed with power from on high. This is Jesus, you know, before he was walking with them, he went everywhere that they went. And so now, he said, you know, don't go anywhere till you're being due with, on, with power from on high because he's getting ready to go to the Father. And Jesus Christ's work, how many people know that Jesus Christ's work is a finished work? We're the ambassadors in the earth. We are the lights in the earth. And so he's given us his word to go forth and do the work. Amen? So we're his ambassadors. Power comes from a Greek word, dunamis which means miraculous power, might, strength. And you can begin to shout whenever you get ready, I guess you, ability. The inherent power of God to do the work of ministry. We can't do anything without power. 
That's why we're in this season at the God and Light Church now. The season of revival, the season that God's doing a new thing. God wants to manifest his power in a mighty way in this church. But we can't get, go forth and be a light of the world unless we let our light shine, unless we get this dunamis power. The power to change lives, the power to heal the sick, the power to even raise the dead. He said greater works we'll do because it goes to the Father. Some stuff we don't even consider that we might be able to do, and therefore you'll never do it. Because he said we'll do greater works because he goes to the Father. There's a greater administration of God's power through the Spirit. He said, I won't leave you comfortless, but I'll send a comforter in my name, even the Spirit of truth that'll guide you in all truth. Give God a praise. Amen. We live in a dark world. When we look at all the things, and I'm almost done. First closing there. But I got a couple more minutes left. I got a couple more minutes. We live in a dark world with dark entities, demonic forces and demonic powers. We look at government corruption, gun violence, suicide, war on terror, war on drugs, uh, deployed armies and, and all our service members on foreign soil, soil fighting wars, sex trafficking, bullying, climate change, and destruction of natural resources, religious conflicts, poverty, ab abortions, corrupt banking system, and on and on and on and on and on. We got trouble in the world. We've got to be a light that shines in darkness. You can be those two little squares on the back of my, my little band right here. That's okay, but just start doing something. Please, how many people are going to commit to, to do something, to let your light shine greater than you've been shining before? Amen? Because the enemy is not playing. The enemy is not playing. You can play if you want to, but when you go forth, your ministry is not going to have any power. Amen? Now, we talk about darkness. My son... I was a friend that he grew up with from a little boy in our neighborhood. Uh, they grew up together, I mean, since kids, elementary school. And uh, he had some problems. He had some issues. He uh, ended up being on drugs. Uh, he went to a couple of treatment centers, and he had graduated. Uh, and, uh, you know, he had went off to be with his parents. You know, his grandmother raised him. And so that's how we met him. And, you know, he had came back around the holidays, around the Thanksgiving holidays. And uh, my son was going somewhere that morning, and uh, he said, there's tape around the house. You know, it's a crime scene tape. So immediately me and my wife began to pray. And we just asked God to intervene. Amen. How many people know that? You don't know what to pray for sometimes. You don't know what's going on. But the Bible says the spirit will cry out. When you don't know what to pray, the spirit will cry out. And so we later found out. And, you know, I mentored him. He was part of a local church there in McCalla. And I prayed with him. I would take him out because his grandmother had a hard time with him, you know. So I would try to be a light. And uh, what we later found out is that he had committed suicide. He took his life around the Thanksgiving holidays last year. And uh, how many people know sometimes you can get kind of frustrated? Because you'd be like, wow, I was trying to let my light shine. But all we can do is what we can do. Amen? All we can do is what we can do. And I said that to say this. Uh, my wife said that she was reading some of his, his posts because uh, he was on social media and we were friends and stuff and we would encourage him that way too. But one of the things that she told me that really stuck out of my mind, he said, the darkness came back. He said, the darkness came back. So what I'm saying is that we live in a dark world and the enemy is not playing. Amen? He means business. 
And he said the darkness came back. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And never miss an opportunity to, to let your light shine. Never miss an opportunity to share life with somebody that don't know Jesus. Because guess what? That could be their last day. The word that you give them could be the only word that they can hang on to. It's serious business. You know, so many times we go home and we just, you know, it's just our kids, our bills, and our job. We don't even think about anybody else. But we live in a dark world and the enemy is not playing and he's stuffing out our children and our kids. And they live just three or four houses down from us. He killed himself. Committed suicide. So we need to really consider when we're going out, when we see something, we need to be a light. We need to realize that the enemy's plan is to, is to take us out. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't negate being a light bearer because it's serious business. What we fight against is not something that we can see. It's not a natural type of warfare, amen? Ephesians 6, I'm going to read this, and I'm going to read five points to becoming an effective light bearer, and then I'm going to be done. Talks about the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, New King James Version. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We wrestle against demonic forces that we can't see. The things of the air, the powers of the air, spirits. And these principalities and powers and rules of darkness are spiritual hosts of wickedness that are, that are present. Satan and his demons influencing the lives of worldly people. Those who are in authority over territories, kingdoms and systems of the world being controlled by demonic force. We wonder why your boss is so evil. You wonder why we got issues in government. You wonder why we got issues in city hall. You wonder why we got issues in, in the county commission. It's because of demonic forces controlling people. And if we, I mean, this warfare that we fight is not a physical warfare because we've been fighting overseas for years and we still haven't won. We've been in Iraq and Afghanistan and everywhere else that you don't know. And we haven't won yet. We just keep fighting. Because it's spiritual warfare. This war that we wage can only be done in the spirit. We only win in the spirit. So we have to wage war with our spiritual weapons. Amen? Come on and give God a praise. You have to have a strategy a strategy is a battle command, battle plan. You have to have a strategy to beat the devil, to win against the devil. You don't just wake up and win against the devil. He's the adversary. You have to have a strategy. You know, when the military deploys, we don't just go out and just do something. We find out what the enemy's capabilities are. We do reconnaissance. We collect information, vital information that's important to you winning. They find out what their weaknesses are, troop size. They find out where they're located. You might need to know that. You can't fight something you don't know where they're at. So these are strategies in the spirit, too, that we have to make sure that we understand how the enemy operates, how he takes over territories and regions when we wage war, and especially if you're a prayer warrior or an intercessor, those that guard the gates. They train and go over all mission essential tasks. Every soldier, airman, sailor, wherever you, whoever you are, whatever branch you're in, you got a job to do. And they're going to make sure you know how to do it too. 
They're going to make sure. So they train and go over all the mission and simple central tasks. Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. Therefore, take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, having done all, stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the, in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication of the saints. Hallelujah. Five ways to become an effective light bearer. Amen. Five ways to become an effective light bearer. Number one is identify the source of the light. Identify the source of light. God is the true light. Amen. John 1 and 4, and this is just reinforces some of the scriptures that we already went over. John 1 and 4 say, in him was life, and that life was the light of man. Amen. Number two, understand the purpose of the light. The purpose of the light creates intimacy with God. Amen. Whenever we're going out sharing the gospel, whenever we're going out being the light, whenever we're going out being sought, we're creating an intimacy with God because we're sharing his word. Amen. John 8 and 12, New King James Version. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. How many people want the light of life? Hallelujah. That's in Jesus Christ. Develop a knowledge of the word. That's number three. Develop a knowledge of the word. Get in the word. Psalms 119 and 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathways. The word of God illuminates our situation so that we can see things clearly so that we can go into safe pastures. Amen? And number four, pray. How many people know that you can't be anything in Christ without a prayer life? The Bible said the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous of it much. Amen. Men ought to always pray and to pray without ceasing. Pray that your light be magnified in the earth. How many people want your light to be magnified in the earth? Like I say, you might be a 10 watt bud, but God wants to give you more. Amen. He wants to give you more. Ephesians 6 and 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful. To this end, with all perseverance and supplication. That supplication is urgent requests that we make before the Lord when we intercede. There's all types of prayers and requests that we should be praying when we intercede for God's people. Amen? Number five is to serve. Live beyond yourself. Amen? Live beyond, beyond yourself. Matthew 23 and 11 says that, but he who is great among you shall be your servant. And how many people know that we need more servants in the body of Christ? Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand of praise if you're going to be a better servant. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible said in Acts 6 that as those deacons were faithful to serve those widows, the Bible says that the church grew. And it says that, you know, it wouldn't be right, the apostles said, it wouldn't be right for us to leave the ministry of the word of God to serve tables, but look and find seven men. Those seven men eventually, they became the first deacons in the church. And we find out that as the men of God were able to pray and minister the word and serve in that way, that the church grew. So we grow as a result of our service. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we just, as you say, call unto me and I'll show you great and unsearchable things that you did not even know of. So, Father, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for the new thing that you're doing at the God and Light Church, Lord. 
Thank you for snap, Lord. Father, increase it, make it better and better and better, Lord God, and send laborers. You say the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You say we can pray to the Lord on the harvest. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you and exalt you right now. We give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise right now. In Jesus' name, begin to say amen. Hallelujah. Begin to say amen and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Continue to praise him. Continue to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.